Emily Teague here. We are back in my studio today for another quick tutorial on lighting, but instead of talking about strobes, we're going to be talking about constant lighting. But first, a little background on my history of lighting before we dive in. I've been shooting for nearly 10 years now, starting with natural light. About seven years ago is when I started picking up speed lights and later moved into strobes. And now I'm at the place where I'm using strobes on almost every shoot, whether that's in studio or on location. So how did constant lighting come into the mix, you might ask? About a year ago, I started getting really interested and inspired by cinematography. That interest had always been there, but all of a sudden it was like a switch had been flipped and I was obsessed and that obsession has only grown. So of course with cinematography, I knew I had to start lighting sets with constant light instead of flash, which initially I felt a little intimidated by. However, almost all of my passions have started with a healthy level of intimidation. To get comfortable using constant light, I started by using it in my portrait shoots in studio, and I very quickly realized there was no need to be intimidated. Light is still light, and the properties still apply. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you a few different constant light setups for in-studio portraits, but first, let's go over my gear. With the disclaimer that you should use whatever gear works for you, I'm really happy with the gear that I choose to use, but that doesn't mean you have to use it. So take the concepts that I'm teaching and apply those. As always, I'm shooting with my Canon 5D Mark IV, paired with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, which is one of my favorites. The V-flats that you're gonna see today are from V-flat World, and I will be tethering to Capture One. Now, as far as lighting, all the lights that I'm using are from Nanlite. I'm going to start with my Nanlite Compact 200B, which is a slim panel. Next, I'll show you the FS150, which is gonna be paired with a softbox. And finally, we'll end it with some four-foot Pavo tubes. So we're here in the studio with Laura, who's my lovely model for today. Thank you for being here. And the light that we're using first is the Compact 200B. It's a slim panel with a brightness from zero to 100% and a temperature color output of 3200 to 5600 Kelvin. So for starters, I have the light directly in front of Laura. It's a pretty flat light. If I look directly in front of her, I can see that the catch light's at about 12 o'clock. So why don't we take a test shot, see how this is looking, and we'll adjust from there. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm looking at this image here and there's things I like, there's things I don't like. First thing is we're looking at her catch light. It's about 12 o'clock. It's a pretty small catch light. Um, I'm used to using large soft boxes, so this is a little bit different for me. But things that I do like, under her jaw, we have this really nice shadow. Um, we have some light where it's supposed to be on her forehead, on her cheeks, down her nose. So contouring is looking pretty good. Um, some things that I would change, it just looks a little bit flat to me. So let's take a couple more shots right in front and adjust it a little bit, and then we'll get a little bit more of an exciting lighting setup after that. Okay, so I'm gonna make a few adjustments, but I figured first I would just let you know where my settings are at right now. I'm at 160 for my shutter speed, 2.8 for my aperture, and 250 for my ISO. And currently on brightness, I am at 100%. So the things that I'm looking at first to adjust, I wanna create a little separation between Laura and my background. So Laura, if you can take your stool, move it forward about, let's come a foot away, and I'll move my light with you. Yeah, that looks great. And so this way, I'm just creating a little bit more separation from the background. I might add even more later, but you'll notice I moved my light back with Laura, so we're still getting the same lighting. Our background is just gonna be a little um, less in focus, which we want. Let's take another test shot. Looking good, light is still looking okay. I like that she's more separated from the background. Let's test something out. I'm going to take this and I'm gonna turn it slightly down, right about there. And I'm actually gonna raise this up. So now let's try this and see how our light's looking. Okay, so this is the shot we've just got. Comparing it to the shot from before, you'll notice a couple different things. One, when she was much closer to the background, the background was a lot lighter. And now that we've moved her away a little bit, our background's starting to get darker because we're also moving the light away with it. So I like that for starters. I'm looking at her skin and the light's looking a little less harsh, which is nice, but still, 
it's, I'm not in love with this. So let's try something else. Next, I'm gonna move the light. So instead of having it directly in front, we'll just move it to the side. So I'm moving this light a little more towards her. And as I move this light, you can see when it's back here, I'm only getting the light on her. There's not so much on the background. And as I tilt this light directly at her, you can see the light spilling onto the background, which I don't think I actually want. So I'm gonna keep it just on her. And Laura, why don't we move even further away from the background and we'll just create a little bit more separation and that background's gonna keep getting darker. Ready? Yeah, that's great. I'll move with you. Beautiful. And so what we're doing now, our light's also feathered because it's not directly at her. You can see the edge of the light's coming right here. So some of this light's spilling off on her and it's gonna create a really soft, beautiful light. Let's try another test shot. So first thing I notice is we've lost a lot of light. So I have a couple different options here. My ISO is at 250 right now. I think I'm gonna raise it up to about 400 and see how that's looking. And if not, we can also bring the light closer, but let's leave the light where it's at right now and just raise our ISO. Okay, so I'm now at 160 for my shutter, 2.8 for my aperture and 400 for my ISO. Light is still being feathered. Let's take another shot. Okay, so looking at this shot compared to our shot before, you can see it's looking a lot nicer. Still things that I like, things that I don't like. For the most part, our light is looking nice and even. On her forehead, it's looking a little hot for me. On the tip of her nose, there's just a few hot spots in here that I'd like to cool down. However, on her shoulder, I'm really liking it. On her collarbone, it's looking really nice. So let's take this portrait in another direction and make it a little bit moodier. So to make this a little darker and moodier, I am bringing in my V-flats. We're just gonna create a dark little cave, which will create some nice shadows. I'm looking at my light and I'm gonna hide it behind this V-flat a little bit. That should still be getting it on her. And then let's raise this up even higher, tilting it slightly more to her. See how that looks. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna turn this light a little bit more towards her. And real quick before I show you guys, I'm gonna lower this slightly back to where I was probably just at. Okay, so this is where we are at now. It's this darker look. Let's compare it to what we were getting before. So kind of light, bright, angelic, all those things um, versus a little bit moodier going on here. Um, things that I, I like and things I don't like as usual. I think we could make the background even darker if we wanted to um, while still creating some separation for her hair. But overall, this is looking pretty decent for me. So this is kind of just an example of how you can use one light. You can make this kind of moody portrait with side lighting, um, or you can make something a lot lighter and brighter with more um, less shadows, less B flats involved. And then just a quick something to note, you can see if you zoom in that there's actually two cache lights in here. One of them is from my light, the other is from my videographer's light who is lighting me. Um, but I just took another shot to show that that light, his light isn't actually affecting the image. So this is another version with nothing changed except taking out his light. And you can see we've got our same lighting. Okay, so setup number two, we've now got my FS150, this mono light style head right here and I've got it paired with a soft box. So there's some diffusion on this. So this should be a softer look than what we were getting with the 200B. Um, and I've still got my, my V-flats up here. So we're getting nice shadow on both sides of her face. Let's give it a test shot and see how this is looking.
Okay, so this is where we're at right now. My shutter is at 1 400th. I'm at ISO 320 and I'm still at 2.8 for my aperture. Let's compare this to what we were getting before. So some major differences that I can see. The number one thing that was killing me before that I'm a lot happier with now is that hot spot on her forehead. So you can see here, the lighting is a lot more even, it's a lot more soft, um, and that is thanks to our soft box. So I'm liking this lighting way more than, let's do a comparison again, than this right here. You can also see with our first look, we had a much smaller um, and more defined catch light versus now we have this, this kind of larger catch light from that large soft box. Um, overall, I just think this is a really lovely look. Something that I'm thinking about doing because you can't see a ton of the catch light in her eye is we can add in another catch light and we can kind of lift some of these shadows underneath by adding in a reflector. So it's kind of gonna be like some clamshell lighting. Let's test that out and see how it looks. Okay, so I've adjusted some stuff. I've added in this silver reflector and what's gonna happen is our light is gonna, still gonna be hitting Laura, but it's gonna come down, it's gonna hit this silver reflector. This is gonna bounce light back up at her. And so this kind of typical clamshell lighting is much more beauty lighting. It should really soften her features, even everything out even more and just create a really nice image. So let's try this out. we'll see how that looks. Okay, so adding in that reflector does a ton for us. You can see this is much more beauty lighting than what we had before. We've gotten rid of some of those shadows that were under her eyes, and now it's just really even, beautiful, soft light. I really like this look. The only thing that I would dial in is her face is a bit too bright for me, so I think I'm just going to adjust the power on my FS150 and come it down a little bit. But other than that, I'm really, really happy. So far, this is my favorite shot. Let's dial the light in a little bit and we'll take some more shots. Okay, so all I've done is I've taken my light from 100% brightness down to 85%. And so this should help with her face being a little less bright while still getting this very nice glow. Let's play around. Okay, so this was our shot before at 100% with the reflector added underneath. And now all the only difference we made was taking that from 100% to 85% brightness. And now you can see everything is looking so nice. I'm really happy with this. Um, things that I look for that I really like in my work, I love this highlight on her shoulder here. Um, I love this highlight on her neck. I love these shadows on this side, the shadows on the side of her face here, the shadow under her jaw. I love that we have these two catch lights. Um, this is just looking like a really beautiful shot and something I would play around with, which we'll do now. Okay, so this is the look that we just did. Again, out of everything we've shot today, definitely the happiest with this um, and the most lighting that represents what I also do with strobes. So let's just flip through a few of these. Beautiful. And I'm feeling really happy with that. So yeah, very happy with this set. Let's jump to our Pavo tubes next. And for this one, there's a couple things we could do. We could just do some Pavo tubes in studio, but I thought as kind of a bonus, it would be fun to go out to my elevator in my apartment building, which is completely silver and reflective. Um, and so we'll kind of be, be bouncing light around out there. So let's head out there. Okay, so here we are. Welcome to my elevator. We have Laura who is in this corner and as you can see it's silver and reflective everywhere in here which is just kind of um, a photographer's dream when it comes to playing with colorful lights. So I've kind of staggered these lights so it's like this orange teal, teal orange um, and now let's just see how it looks. So for settings I'm at 1 1 25th for my shutter, aperture f5 and ISO 12 50, which is a bit high for me, but let's see. That's looking pretty cool. So I already know there's gonna be quite a bit of post-production in this, but all the bones are here. 
I'm shooting raw, so I know I'll be able to push this quite a bit. And I'm gonna bring out some more of that color. Laura, let's have you kind of look over that way. And I'm trying to get a little bit more of this orange light to be on her face. I'm gonna move this orange so I get a little bit more light. We'll do the same over here. Beautiful. Okay, so I didn't get much time to talk in the elevator because we had to go really quick because there were people coming in and out and they weren't very impressed with our photo shoot. Um, however, <laughs> a little bit about what we were doing. So I was using four four foot, foot pavo tubes. Um, I was using two teal and two orange, kind of going for like these cinematic Blade Runner colors. So let's look at some of the photos that we got. So this is where I started, um, and it was a lot more blue, a lot more orange. Um, this was when I was still kind of playing around with my settings, seeing what worked. This was at ISO 250, shutter 1 160th, um, aperture F8, sorry, aperture 2.8 and at 24 millimeter for my lens. Um, so this was a good start, but then I started playing around a little bit more and I boosted my ISO up a ton, way more than I would normally ever go. But I actually really like the look of this. So we start bringing in a lot more of these greens. Um, the orange pavo tube on the right side is giving her cheekbone this really, really nice contrast with the rest of the green on her face. Here are a couple more. This one is actually my favorite of all of them. Um, I just love kind of the dimension going on here, the colors, the look in her eye. I think this one is a really strong image. And I do see a lot that um, when I'm actually retouching, I will go in and clear up. I did make some global adjustments, so I'll show you a before and after of those. So we've got before, this is with no edits, and then coming over with our edits, you can see I, I added some contrast. Um, I took down the shadow a little bit. I took down the highlights a ton. And that is our, our overall edit. And you can see the edits that I'm making over here and then all my different adjustment layers. So not a major difference in the before and after, but definitely helps a ton. And then one more image. So this just kind of gives you an idea of what we did um, and the reason that our light was bouncing all over the place again is because of those silver reflective walls that just bounce light and color and when you're working with colorful lights um, having an environment like this is really fun to play around in. And that is it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that quick little tutorial and I hope you learned something. If you did or if you have any thoughts at all, let me know in the comment section below. Um, I'm always interested to hear what you guys are saying and just really grateful for Adorama's community. So say hi and I will catch you guys in the next video.